Amy Winehouse Biography Amy Jade Winehouse Amy Winehouse won five Grammy Awards for her 2006 album Back to Black and is remembered for songs like Rehab, Back to Black and Valerie. She died in 2011 at age 27. Synopsis Born in London, England, on September 14, 1983, Amy Winehouse broke into the music business when, at age 16, a classmate passed on her demo tape. She signed her first record deal as a jazz vocalist, and her music later blossomed into an eclectic mix of jazz, pop, soul, and R&B. Winehouse won five Grammy Awards connected her 2006 album Back to Black, and earned acclaim for songs like the title track, Rehab, Love is a Losing Game, and Valerie. Winehouse died tragically on July 23, 2011, at the age of 27 from accidental alcohol poisoning. Early Career Amy Jade Winehouse was born on September 14, 1983, in the suburb of Southgate in London, England. Her father, Mitch Winehouse, worked as a cab driver while mother Janice was employed as a pharmacist. Winehouse's upbringing was surrounded by jazz, Many of her uncles on her mother's side were professional jazz musicians, and her father sang as a child with his own family. And Winehouse's paternal grandmother was once romantically involved with British jazz legend Ronnie Scott. Because of this musical background, Winehouse grew up listening to a diverse range of music, from James Taylor to Sarah Vaughan. At the age of 10, she became drawn to the rebellious spirit of TLC, Salt and Paper, and other American R&B and hip-hop acts and founded a short-lived amateur rap group called Sweet and Sour. At the age of 12, Winehouse was accepted into the prestigious Sylvia Young Theatre School, and a year later she received her first guitar. But by the age of 16, Winehouse was expelled for not applying herself and piercing her nose. That same year, she caught her first big break when a schoolmate and close friend, pop singer Tyler James, passed her demo tape to his label A&R who was searching for a jazz vocalist. The opportunity led her to a record deal with Island Universal. Debut Album, Frank Her debut album, Frank, 2003, was a critically acclaimed mixture of jazz, pop, soul, and hip-hop. The album was nominated for the Mercury Music Prize as well as two Brit Awards for Best Female Solo Artist and Best Urban Act. The debut single on the album, Stronger Than Me, earned the new artist an Ivor Novello Award. Frank also hit double platinum status. During this time, Winehouse began developing a reputation as an unstable party girl, often showing up to her club or TV performances too drunk to sing a whole set. She also started a tumultuous, on-again-off-again relationship with music video assistant Blake Field de Civil who admitted to introducing Winehouse to hard drugs. In public, the couple's arguments often devolved into fist fights and dramatic scenes. In private, their romance centered around drugs, alcohol, physical abuse, and even self-harm. International Star By 2006, her management company finally suggested that Winehouse enter rehab for alcohol abuse. Instead, she dumped the company and turned the experience into the lead single for her second, critically acclaimed album Back to Black. 2006. The song, Rehab, which discussed her refusal to receive treatment for substance abuse, became an instant top 10 hit in the United Kingdom and earned the artist another Ivor Novello Award for the Best Contemporary Song. The album was also a critical success, winning the artist a Brit Award for Best Female Solo Artist and a Brit nomination for Best British Album in 2007. Less than a month after her Brit win, Back to Black made its American debut. It was an instant smash, hitting higher on the Billboard music charts than any other American debut by a British female recording artist in history. The album stayed in the top 10 for several months, selling 1 million copies by the end of that summer, with Rehab becoming a top 10 US hit as well. Marriage and Erratic Behavior In April of 2007, Winehouse's relationship with Blake Field Civil also blossomed into an engagement. Winehouse revealed that her romance with the 23-year-old was the inspiration for several of the Back to Black tracks. The couple eloped and married on May 18, 2007, in a ceremony in Miami, Florida. Unfortunately, when it came to on-stage appearances, Winehouse returned to her old habits. 
The first night of a 17-date U.S. tour opened to an incapacitated Winehouse, who showed up to perform while under the influence of illegal substances. The crowd at the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham, Alabama, responded with boos and walkouts. Winehouse responded to the crowd with sobbing and swearing. Her erratic behavior caused an uproar with fans and turned her into tabloid fodder. Winehouse, an admitted marijuana smoker, was dogged by reports of continued drug abuse and strange behavior. On August 8, 2007, the singer overdosed on several drugs, being brought to medical facilities in an incoherent state. First claiming exhaustion, Winehouse later told the News of the World that she overdosed after she had used a mix of heroin, cocaine, ecstasy, ketamine, whiskey, and vodka during a bar crawl in London. The episode put a planned tour of North America on hold. August 21, 2007, announcement indicated that Winehouse had been ordered to rest and was working with doctors to address her health. Arrests and cancelled appearances. Her European tour in the fall of 2007, however, was scheduled to continue. But while in Norway in October of 2007, an anonymous tip led police to the Stars Hotel in Bergen, where she was arrested and held in prison overnight for marijuana possession. Winehouse, her husband Blake and a third unidentified person were jailed. The trio was released after paying $715 in fines. In November 2007, Winehouse's husband was arrested again for allegedly offering a $400,000 bribe to a bartender whom he had allegedly assaulted in June 2007. Shortly after, he was taken into custody, and Winehouse cancelled all concerts and public appearances for the rest of 2007, again citing doctor's orders. A month later, Winehouse was arrested on suspicion of attempting to interfere with her husband's case. She voluntarily reported to a police station and was arrested before questioning. She later blamed her husband's legal woes for her inability to continue her tour. Despite her inconsistent touring schedule, Winehouse's album continued to sell, going platinum nearly five times that year. It became the best-selling album of 2007 in the United Kingdom. Rehab and record-setting Grammy wins in January 2008, a video allegedly showing Winehouse smoking crack cocaine surfaced, leading to a brief stint in rehab. She was arrested on May 2008 for questioning but wasn't formally charged in the case after police said they could not officially determine what the singer was smoking. After publicly admitting to illegal substance abuse, Winehouse was denied a U.S. visa due to her use and abuse of narcotics. The visa prevented her from performing live at the 2008 Grammy Awards. Instead, she performed in London via satellite. During the evening ceremony, Winehouse won five Grammy Awards, including for Best New Artist, Record of the Year and Song of the Year, becoming the first British singer to win five Grammy Awards, as well as tying with singer Beyoncé Knowles for the record of the most Grammy wins by a female artist in a single night. Knowles broke that record in 2010 when she won six Grammy Awards in one night, and Adele tied that record with six Grammy wins in 2012. More personal setbacks Despite her musical success, Winehouse's health and personal life began to quickly deteriorate. Her erratic behavior continued in June 2008, when she appeared to punch a fan during a performance at the Glastonbury Music Festival in England. Londoner James Gostolo, 25, told BBC News that Winehouse elbowed him in the forehead after someone in the crowd behind him threw a hat at her. In a widely circulated video of the incident, Winehouse was seen throwing a series of punches into the crowd. Costello said he had no intention of making a complaint to police, and Winehouse escaped criminal proceedings. After the concert, Winehouse returned to a London clinic where she had been receiving treatment for traces of emphysema and an irregular heartbeat caused by smoking crack cocaine and cigarettes. Winehouse's father told reporters that his daughter was warned that she would have to wear an oxygen mask if she didn't stop abusing drugs. That same month, Fielder Civil and his three co-defendants pleaded guilty to assault and obstruction charges. The courts released Fielder Civil from jail time on the condition that he stay in a drug rehabilitation center for long-term treatment. By the end of 2008, the singer's marriage had dissolved. 
Winehouse had begun an extended stay on the Caribbean island of St. Lucia, during which time she had allegedly met a new love interest. And tabloids had linked Fielder Civil to German model Sophie Schandorf. In January 2009, Winehouse spokesperson confirmed that divorce proceedings had begun between husband and wife, with Fielder Civil filing for divorce and citing adultery as the reason for the split. Attempted comeback. Regardless of personal setbacks, 2009 proved to be another strong year for Winehouse. In 2008, her album Back to Black was declared the second highest selling album in the world, and in 2009, she earned entry into the Guinness Book of World Records for most Grammy Awards won by a British female act. Additionally, Winehouse announced that she was starting her own record label, Lioness Records, later signing her 13 year old goddaughter, Dion Brumfield, as the first musician on the label. Death. Sadly, at the end of her life, Winehouse's enormous talent was overshadowed by her addiction to drugs and alcohol. The singer died tragically on July 23, 2011, at the age of 27, from accidental alcohol poisoning. Winehouse's life and career were the focus of a critically acclaimed documentary Amy, which hit theaters on July 2015 and was directed by Asif Kapodia. While the film has been widely celebrated, it upset Winehouse family. They released a statement through a spokesperson after the film was shown at the 2015 Cannes Film Festival. The family said that the project is a missed opportunity to celebrate her life and talent and that it is both misleading and contains some basic untruths, according to The Hollywood Reporter.